Well, hello, children. It is I, once again, May Leeds. You'll remember me from May Caroni and Cheese. Also, I'm fairly well known for being the nasty lady, the dirty lady, the stinky lady. That's right. I watch the nasty shit so you don't have to. I'm kind of like the nostalgia critic, but leagues better and a lady. Only I watch filth that is intolerable and I am well known for doing so and have done so for many many years. I guess it was about a year ago now or maybe it was even two. Who even knows anymore? I did a series on the disturbing movies iceberg where I went down it and discovered all of the terrible terrible things that lurk at the depths and I had to endure quite a bit of it. I was well known for prior to all of that, making a lot of videos about disturbing movies or at least which movies were like the worst or most nasty of them, the most stank ass. But only recently has my mind been expanded, my eyes been opened to the possibilities. Let it be known that in the last few years, because there's been so much interest in shocking like exploitation cinema, just a ton of it has found its way to DVD and Blu-ray. We would have never heard of most of these titles, but for whatever reason nowadays, that's what you get. You get these. And isn't it wonderful? Isn't it wonderful to be in the future? The future's really fucking great, guys. By probability alone, you've probably seen a video that's titled The 10 Most Disturbing Movies of Ever. You're probably gonna see some stuff on there that's pretty bad. Let me tell you what, my list is significantly worse. My list is so intolerable that you should probably just run away now now. There were people once upon a time that thought that they knew what the depths of disturbing cinema were, including me. Oh lo, I had no fucking idea what I was talking about. And then upon actually discovering how bad things can be, oh it was eye-opening. Oh it was eye-opening to see what could be could be done with cinema. Um, so today we're going to look at some things that were done to cinema. <laughs> So before we get started, before we start knocking down like everything bad that's imaginable, I'm gonna do a few honorable mentions and understand that the reason why I feel the need to do some of these honorable mentions is simply because I know for a fact that people out there are going to look at my list and go, Come on, what about popular title? What about popular film that people have heard of? Why did you go with movies that people didn't hear of? You should have went with popular film. So here are honorable mentions of some popular and unpopular things. Okay, so Mei Chan's Daily Life, good shit. I'm gonna honorably mention it because genuinely it won me over at some point. There was like a halfway point in the movie where I was like, wow, this might be the worst movie I've ever seen. Literally about halfway through, there is a moment where I. I shit you not, there is a, a chainsaw gut fuck like something out of a Mayhem album. Very literally, someone uh, fucks someone with a chainsaw. And at that point, I was pretty much sold. Like, there was nothing the movie could do wrong uh, in my eyes. At that point, I was pretty much all in. Because the effects are so terrible, and also the plot of the movie is garishly embarrassing, I don't think that it would ever make anybody's list of things that were genuinely really, really disturbing or fucked up, but it's worth mentioning. I mean, if you're bored. Okay, so this goes under the uh, popular titles. A Serbian film is like the disturbing movie. Every time you're like, disturbing movie, people are like, you mean like a Serbian film? Uh, if a Serbian film is the worst thing that you've ever seen, you haven't looked hard enough, sister. There's so much worse. Like, what is this? Y'all y'all just like lean on a Serbian film and go, okay, well, I guess I've seen it all. Bullshit, I say, you've seen none of it. And also oftentimes people say, May, are you okay? Like, do you need to stop watching things like this? No, don't tell me how to live my life. Also, what if I like it like this? A Serbian film on the other hand, I don't know if I like it. I don't think it's aged 
super great. I, I also don't know if it was made for very good political motivations in the first place. A lot of people talked about, including me, there were secret political motivations. Guys, it's not just needless, senseless violence. It's talking about a thing. But then you like look into what the thing is and you're like, I don't know if I support this any longer. It's not the worst thing I've ever seen. It doesn't even make my list anymore, but there was a time where this was like something else, I guess. Okay, so there are two Taikashi Miike movies I talk about on the list, which uh, for whatever reason, stand the test of time and they never seem to die. Just like Mei Chan from Mei Chan's Daily Life. I am the first person to ever make a joke about that particular thing. So Visitor Q deserves an honorable mention simply for uh, a really awkward moment where someone has incestual necrophilia and then the a comedy moment ensues where they uh, cannot remove one's phallus from the dead um, incest uh, situation. We all have a, a laugh. Are you familiar with humor? The bridge is something I wanted to mention because genuinely in my onion, this is probably one of the more disturbing things that exists, like just as a thing. But because of a lot of the criteria and because of the way that a lot of people are going to look at it, and also just like the general phantasmagorical nature of the way that these things have a tendency to go, a documentary doesn't really find itself in here. Although the bridge is 100% like one of the most fucked up things I've ever seen. It's just a documentary where they film the Golden Gate Bridge over the course of the year as people jump off of it and kill themselves. Then they interview their family and they're like, we got video of, of a guy jumping off the bridge. Let's show the video. And then you watch it and you're like, oh, yay, woohoo, this is great. I love to watch people die. No, it's good for you. It's great. It's healthy and normal and natural and great. Also, I would like to mention Dear Zachary or a letter from a boy about his, to a boy about his father. Father. I want to say anyway, uh, lots of uh, lots of unnecessary misery in there. Let me tell you what, if you like human suffering, there's really no shortage of it in this world. But in the documentary world, oh boy, oh boy, there's so much stuff. There's shit your mom has seen on daytime TV that will knock your socks off, man. For our purposes, let's just pretend, let's just do a little pretend that the documentary world, reality is not more fucked up than fiction. And let's pretend that some people could actually, with their mind, come up with some stuff that would genuinely be worse. And with that last honorable mention, Cannibal Holocaust, people are gonna talk about it, but I think that people are mostly gonna talk about it because it's not on my list. That's right, a Serbian film, Cannibal Holocaust, not even in the top 10, not even in the top 10, not even close. I do feel like these are strong choices, strong contenders for perhaps a top 20. Cannibal Holocaust is like a movie that stands the test of time uh, in, in the fact that it, it's like the one movie that goes all the way there, even when it sucks. An actual point. It feels like a movie that someone uh, wrote and thought about for f a few minutes before deciding to do, which is very different from a lot of these movies. As a matter of fact, a lot of the movies on my list are going to come across like literally a a guy woke up one morning, found a camera, and was like, I've decided to ruin everyone's brains. This is a frequent thing, but Cannibal Holocaust, a very prepared, very planned film. And also they killed some animals, which makes everybody hate it. I super hate seeing it, but I've also seen the movie 20 times, and I've also watched the film on LSD. You could say that I'm some kind of mental trooper. I've been through the shit. What if we sort of talked about, I don't know, ooh, ooh, my list of my top 10 disturbing things. Okay, so number one uh, is Tumbling Doll of Flesh. I don't even know if I've ever seen this on anybody's list of anything ever. I guess partially that's because this has only fairly recently become something you can see with your eyes. And oh boy, am I sorry. And it is a film. A film. A narrative film. That's the one criteria. There's no like bullshit, real gore, bullshit nastiness on my list. It's all movies. Even if they're bad, they are technically movies. I think that the thing that everybody hated about the disturbing movie Iceberg was that at some point it stopped being about movies and it started being about other shit. Films that were created with a cinematic creative vision. Some sort of auteurism one might even say. So when I say Tumbling Doll of Flesh is like a movie, understand that when I say it's a movie, I mean that on the loosest terms because it's also a pornography. 
pornography. When I say it's a pornography, I mean that you watch the pornography happen for the first half of the film, which is very uncomfortable when you're like trying to tell your mom to be quiet. About halfway through, things get a little spicy. They start to uh, harm the girl. In the last bit of it, they get really wise and begin mixing the porn and the violence. So it's just sort of like they do some gore to her and then they do some fuck to her and then they do some fuck to the gore to her. This is all very, very bad. Understand, this is all very, very bad. But understand also, this all culminates in a moment where uh, the lead actor man from the porno has to fuck the woman's stomach and I hated it. I don't know how many friends I'd be showing this to or even telling that you've seen this. I would maybe keep this one to yourself. Speaking of movies to keep to yourself, Necromantic 1 and 2. That's technically against the rules, but I figured if I was recommending one, I had to recommend both of them. Necromantic is exactly what it sounds like. Imagine somebody romantically engaging with the dead and there you go. You've got a party. I've probably been talking about this movie for longer than you've been alive, but it only just recently found its way to like Blu-ray and so a lot of people are beginning to see this absolute filth are returning to me and saying, May, you've been talking about Necromantic for years. I've only just seen it and I want you to know that I have finally learned that you're a total charlatan and a fraud because it is just the worst film. It is awful. It is like watching paint dry if it was fucking a corpse. It's not exciting cinema. I would also say that it's not well made, but it is 100% movies about people having sex with dead bodies. Where, where else are you gonna go to get that? Give me an alternative. Where else are you gonna see that shit? That's what I thought. There's just not an answer that will satiate my needs. So the Vomit Gore trilogy is the third one, which once again, I know is technically three movies or four or five or however many now. I gotta mention this shit because literally, wow, what exactly are the ethics of talking about this? Because like a lot of people are currently on the fuck Lucifer Valentine uh, train because he did some allegations supposedly. I've also seen his movies so I know I know what he's done. <laughs> I know the things that he is guilty of. I've watched him. We're talking about a man that is so proud of his villainy. This Lucifer Valentine man but yet so sensitive sometimes it's very strange but usually very proud of his villainy so much so that he puts his shit directly on display. So if you're ever like, man, I don't know if that Lucifer Valentine guy and his movies are ethical, just watch one of them. Just watch one of them and ask yourself if they're ethical. The answer is no. The answer is absolutely fucking no. No, they're not ethical. It's not okay to do any of the shit that they do in these movies. My God. So if you don't know what the Vomit Gore trilogy is, it's basically guy with vomit fetish films a lot of people who vomit. There is plot, but it is buried under vomit. Puddles and puddles of it. It's basically basically just a guy and his friends all hanging out and puking different substances into different things and then drinking the puke and then puking further. The reason that I put it on here as disturbing should be fairly plain to anybody with a stomach that is not made of entirely steel. Must admit that in watching these, I had to stop watching them a few times to do a vomit myself. Also, I would like to give an honorable mention to something that I saw in the Vomit Gore trilogy that for whatever reason will never get out of my mind. So now I get to show it to you. And aren't you lucky? There is a moment in one of these movies where a woman came out of a bathroom and looked genuinely like pregnant, filled with pee, piss, urine. All the trans women in the audience just, just looked up and went, what? So she like lays on a wall with her with her ass in the air, <laughs> pisses on the wall and down onto herself. So I wanted to personally just say thank you to that woman who did that and thank you for making me know about it. I'm super glad about it. I wonder why nightmares plague me every evening. Also the end of the Vomit Gore trilogy as far as I made it, which is the third movie, uh, features a guy chugging and vomiting and chugging and vomiting the same chemical for a while. And uh, it is so tediously disgusting that there does 
does come a point, and I thought, I didn't know if this was possible, there can come a point where you get so inundated by vomit porn and the literal nastiness of the vomit, it no longer bothers you at all. At some point, you start to look at it more clinically, like, it seems like it's rather unhealthy for them to continue to drink the same substance. Oh boy, their poor esophaguses are not worth all of this art they're making. Generally, lots of great thoughts while watching the Vomit Gore trilogy. Anyway, let's just move right on. Number four is Angel's Melancholy, which is a film directed by Marion Dora. So I gotta mention it because it is genuinely way worse than like anything else that you've probably seen in your life. And also, if you're gonna go looking for like lists of disturbing movies, never going to see this movie on there because so many people have failed to brave watching it. Why is it that so many people have failed to brave watching it? Lots of animal torture. Love that. Love that a lot. That's my favorite. It sure doesn't bother me at all. And also like very real shit, piss, and sex shit. And also the combination of violence and sexuality, which is even more fun. We all love that. But the real reason why most people haven't seen it is because up until I think very recently, there is not a translation of this in English. You have to watch this in its original language and guess at what you are seeing. And I think the majority of people were like, oh, there isn't English subtitles. I guess I'm out. Clearly they were afraid of the language, but I am not afraid of the language. I saw the shit and let me tell you what, it's pretty bad. Like when people say that it's bad, they're, they're not shitting you. It's pretty bad. Speaking of shitting you, there's like a lot of shit stuff. More shit stuff I think in this than any, well, there's a couple, you know, there's shit everywhere, but, but there's some shit stuff in this. Let's just say that. I'll just start with there's some shit stuff. I really don't need to say an awful lot more. It's basically about a, a, a descent into horrific violence you've seen this movie before the categories have a tendency to be like woman gets tortured porn to snuff pipeline people fall into into depravity this is a people fall into depravity story they basically all just begin fucking each other and then that's not enough so then they begin shitting on each other and that's not enough so then we, it's just you know how these things go you've had some friends around things get kind of weird i can't be the only one so the fifth is the guinea pig series and I know, once again, this is not one film, but oops, surprise, you get all of them. Way interesting history. Uh, Hideshi Hino, the filmmaker, is very interesting just as a guy. He's a mangaka, and a lot of his manga is pretty good. I said that like a Texan. Manga. Manga. How do people say uh, words correctly? I, I grew up in Texas, where everyone is really stupid, apparently. I think the first one's real good. I think Flower, Flesh, and Blood, really good. Lately, when people ask me, like, what movie is your favorite movie? I usually say flowers, flesh, and blood. Actually, that's real fun for me. <laughs> you should also check out Mermaid in a Manhole, which was also really nasty in there. The whole series is just a series of really, really awful, basically art films. Mermaid in a Manhole is something special if you are grossed out by de decomposing bodies which I'm not. I'm not grossed out by nothing. August Underground Mortem. I could have easily put the whole series, but I wanted to put Mortem in specific for uh, this moment that is genuinely never going to leave my mind as long as I'm alive. A group of serial killers make a guy cut off his own penis. That is so epic. You see a lot of serial killer stuff, even on disturbing movies like Liss. And the way that I learned it in film school is you got your three options. You got option A, you got option B, you got option C. Option A, stuff everybody would think about. We're talking torturing women. Then you got your option B, stuff that only half the audience would think of. We're talking about your Fight Club twist ending. And then you got option C, stuff that only you, only you would think of. Making a man cut off his own penis in your movie. That in and of itself is something that only this guy, Fred Vogel, would have put in a movie for me to look at. And for that, I must say, congratulations, my man. You've succeeded in screenwriting ways so many people have not. That said, these movies are about serial killers who do nasty stuff, and it's all shot found footage so that makes it all nastier. Even if it wasn't found footage, even if you didn't know any of that, even if you just stumbled upon this, there are scenes in this that will never ever, ever leave you. <laughs> and maybe that's good. Maybe you should never forget. So the next movie uh, is Seven, is Ishii the Killer, which is 
uh, a Takashi Miike movie, and this movie is one of the only movies that I feel like will forever live on my like 10 worst things I've ever seen, mostly because it's not just about the content, it's also about the audacity. And if we're talking about an audacious motherfucker, we're talking Takashi Miike is the most audacious motherfucker. He has the opening title sequence of Ishii the Killer made out of jizz, cum, sperm if you will. A boy, a man with his, he makes some and then the title appears into side of it and then you have to see it and I love that. I, it's audacious. Takashi Miike is the guy out here that's doing it for all us real homies. You know what I mean? He's really pushing the boundaries. Ishii the Killer is also just generally very funny but also real shocking. Two people who are kind of like in this competition to do the most extreme violence to people without knowing that they're in a competition and also like one of them is like this is a party I love killing people and the other person's like I'm terrified I hate that I'm violent so it becomes just hilarious at the end as these things kind of coalesce see because not only is Taikashi Miike a really fucked up guy who makes really fucked up movies but also he's great at making movies so his movies are actually surprisingly good the same same can be said for movie number eight on our list, which is Audition, which will never ever leave the list. I've watched so much bad shit, but I keep coming back to the same ones a couple of times, mostly for very specific reasons. The reason with Audition is there is a moment a woman makes a man who has his limbs removed crawl over like a caterpillar and drink her vomit. There's just nothing like it. And that's not even including the ending, which is almost like a meme. It's so horrible. Like, I feel like I saw so many gifs on Tumblr like forever ago of the last like five scenes of audition just because they are just so fucking viscerally fucked up. Great shit over at audition. Takashi Miike like is truly the king of making this kind of shit, which is also why I went ahead and honorable mentioned Visitor Q because that's like the other one, like the third very bad time time that he made. So I would check out his other two very bad times. Number nine. Okay, this is probably the most standard pick. Like, I think this is the one where most people would be like, yes, I understand why you picked this movie as like one of the most disturbing movies of all time. And that is Sallow or 120 Days of Sodom, which I've picked many times and I've talked about many times and I'm rather pro a proponent of. I've talked about it a lot, like how it's very anti-fascist. It seems like everybody who was making it seemed to have a great little time. And then of course the dude died at the end end of it and it's very mysterious as to how he died which makes the story like 10 times more interesting to me the fact that this movie is like the only piece of cinema that really demonstrates the the depths and the horrors of fascism in like the truest imaginable sense like genuinely disgusting genuinely upsetting it's like a literal guide through hell in the same way that like some like Dante's Inferno sort of this one point where there's just a bunch of shit eating so once again as I said feces stuff puke stuff not a lot of puke stuff here definitely a lot of rape and a lot of feces stuff i would probably check that one out there was this meme i saw a long time ago i'll probably just throw it up if i find it it literally said if i see sallow or 120 days of sodom in your criterion collection the bra just comes right off all right and number 10 goodbye uncle tom a movie that as far as i know is shockingly not discussed way fucked up like way unacceptable movie like oh holy shit how does this exist this is a movie that is basically made with slave labor about how bad the antebellum slave era south was in the United States made by Italians. So it's Italians that in, in no way have interacted with American slavery and it's like long-term effects making a movie where they're like, see, we're very not racist while using slaves and putting them in situations that super duper suck and are very exploitational to say this message so that at the end of the movie, they can justify a moment where like, a bunch of like Black Panthers basically go in and kill a bunch of white people and slam their baby against the wall. It's wild. All of this to make people be like, damn, this is very justified because of all the slavery that I saw prior to this. So it's kind of the Italian filmmaking model of like, well, the ends always justify the memes. Mean, <laughs> the ends always justify the memes. Goodness, like we want to talk about irresponsible filmmaking, like Goodbye Uncle Tom 
has got to be the most misguided, backwards-minded, but also the gall, the audacity. Just imagine being like, yes, I would like to make a movie about the slave era South, and I would like to do it as close as possible with actual, literal human slaves. What if I did? Think of it. Goodbye Uncle Tom is made by, like, the same documentary filmmakers that made, like, Mondo Kane and stuff like that, and Cannibal Holocaust is ironically kind of a comment on how fucked up it is that those two filmmakers were doing shit like Goodbye Uncle Tom around the same time. All of this stuff kind of has a weird intermingling web, which is really fun to think about, and also worth researching yourself. If you get a little bonus time and you're like, damn, I want to know more about these fucked up Italian people, do yourself a little Google. And with that, I suppose I've just covered, like, my current 10 most disturbing movies of all time. Like, in my opinion, these movies suck the most. Like, if you're looking for a movie that sucks tonight, if you're like, damn, I gotta go down to Blockbuster, get in my car, first I gotta go to Taco Bell and get myself some Baja Blast, then I go down to Blockbuster, and inside Blockbuster I have to go up to the counter and I ask them for any one thing and I want something that sucks, the first thing you go to, necromantic, it's time to go, you know what I mean? Now you have the answers. If some Someone asks you, like, holy shit, do you want to watch a fucked up movie? What fucked up movie do you want to watch? And they say, do you want to watch a Serbian film? You can be like, no, you silly bitch. I watch way more hardcore stuff now. Let's watch Tumbling Doll of Flesh. And then you'll never see that friend again, but it'll be worth it for the memes. So thank you all for watching my long winded video about the top 10 most disturbing movies of all time. Again, this time very legitimate. <laughs> like this time I actually think I mean it. Genuinely, if I see things that are worse than this in the next 10 years, I'm gonna be surprised. Now, if you liked my video, consider giving it a like or giving all of my videos a like or just giving anything a like. If you see a like somewhere and it has my face or name near it, just throw that shit up there. See what happens. Sometimes I hear that if you press like, a fairy comes out and gives you three three wishes. If you get those three wishes, I highly recommend you ask the fairy about the mysteries of life and death. You don't get a lot of chances to know this kind of information and fairies know that shit. Also, you should consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. It's where all of my horrors are housed. I put all of my bullshit here. I even have kind of started dipping my toe into like putting my own personal art over here too, which is something I've av avoided for a long time because people seem to not like y your personal art. They're like, hey, can you tone it down with the personal art stuff and do a little bit more of the talking about poop? You can pick up my music over at nickspheres.bandcamp.com. I have a whole bunch of new music out right now. Uh, and I also wrote a book, which is called Fluids, uh, which, yeah, if you can see the, on the trigger warning there, uh, everything in it is very bad. So if you like things that are bad, this might be the book for you. Understand that I've watched the worst things that exist. So when I tried to do this, I was like, I want to do something as bad as those things. And my aspirations, while high, were fairly met. Most people are genuinely upset that they read this. So I would highly recommend that you also pick yourself up a copy over at nixfears.bandcamp slash merch. There should be a couple of copies left. And if not, I might be ordering more soon. We'll see. Doing the book entirely DIY, so I'm not, I'm not going through any intermediary whatsoever for help. And if you love what I do and you want to support all the things that I do, because I'm always doing something, I do a million things, head on over to patreon.com slash nixfears, which is uh, just kind of my big home. You can find all my stuff there. You can find my Discord server stuff there. I want to sincerely thank you for if this is your first time with me. Hello. I'm so sorry you made it this far, but it's great to be your friend now. <laughs> if you are a returning subscriber, if you've been here for a long time, sincerely thank you for continuing to watch my YouTube videos. I've only gotten worse, and I'd like to think that so have you. I think only time will tell, my friends. <sighs> Now with that, I'm gonna send you out into the night knowing all of these horrible things that you will carry with you till your untimely death. Remember that the world is not as bleak as it might look even though it is pretty bleak and also watching a bunch of shit like this can color your existence, change the way that you look at things. If you don't want things looked at like that, I highly recommend you look at I don't know anything else. It is worth taking a little divey poo into if you're curious. 
curiosity, as you know, is never bad and has caused no one harm ever. So with that, I'll see you later and have a wonderful holiday, uh, weekend, uh, day. I actually have no idea when you're watching this. You could be watching this like after everything went to shit again. Like it could be like the apocalyptic future and you could be watching this and you'd be like, I'm not going to have a good fucking weekend. I love you. Goodbye, my friends have safe travels and even safer dreams. <laughs> <laughs>